into to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey everybody and welcome to a very special Spotlight On. I'm your host Yelts Eagle and we are talking to an amazing man, a very <laughs> modest man. We're talking to um, a star of the librarians. I'm like freaking out. <laughs> guys, we got John Kim here. Hey guys, uh, <laughs> thanks for having me um, and thank you for that very lovely intro. Um, <laughs> really the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. I, I disagree. <laughs> I doubt it. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, Let's talk about, before we even get to the librarians, which is what everyone wants to hear about, um, you happen to be Australian. Yeah. And you were on a long-running Australian series. Yes. Um, Neighbors. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. How did you get involved in Neighbors before you made it out here? Um, well, Neighbors was sort of my first speaking role, mm -hmm. uh, as far as acting goes. Um, I got involved uh, pretty much, I think when I was 15, I uh, was walking past a bulletin board and um, I saw a one free acting class poster and uh, there, was very, there was a very cute girl on the poster <laughs> and, um, and I thought I'd love to meet her and uh, a friend at the time was interested in getting into that sort of stuff too and um, we decided we would check it out and see what it was like and it ended up being, um, you know, some of the most fun we've ever had. So uh, through that, I through the class, I ended up getting an agency and um, never met the girl, unfortunately. Aww. She doesn't exist. She's a promo photo that they bought. Um, That's so sad. Yeah, um, you know, if she's out there and watching, uh, yeah. that'd be great if she could uh, come say hi. But um, <laughs> uh, no, so pretty much um, uh, the agent sent her an audition one day for a character on Neighbours and um, I um, uh, went to the casting and I had a lot of fun auditioning and I think within the next two days they'd let me know that I'd booked the role. Um, and so for, I think it was a two year span on and off, uh, throughout the last two years of my high school I got to, um, yeah, I got to uh, play a very, very, very mean character. I, I was going to say, I haven't watched the show, but I read about your character. He was kind of a bully. Uh -huh. He mm. made fun of everyone. Yeah, he wasn't a nice dude. Yeah, I don't think I would be friends with him. But um, <laughs> he, um, he, his, his name was Dale McGregor, and uh, it was really nice to sort of get my sort of claws into a, an actual character. Um, he was pretty much the guy responsible for stirring the pot a little down at Erinsborough. And um, yeah, I mean, he was he was a blast to play. And, you know, I got to sort of, um, because it was recurring, my schedule wasn't too heavy. I got to do what I love to do, but then also finish up school and graduate. So that was, um, you know, an amazing opportunity. And how did you get from doing that to where we are today? Um, Pretty much uh, once the show wrapped, um, because in Australia, it's either that or home and away, and, and then, you know, um, after that, you don't come across too many more opportunities, so I, I wasn't sure how much longer I'd be acting, but um, we got in touch with a manager up here in LA, and um, I flew up, uh, and it was originally a little tough to get in a meeting with him, he was super busy, and then I think it was the last day, actually, I was, I had a flight at seven, and he emailed saying, you know, I have an opening at three three or four and I was like okay so I packed all my stuff and, and because for a flight you want to be really comfortable so mm -hmm. I was uh, I was in like tracks sweatpants we call them trackies yeah um, I was in uh, you know I think I had a snapback on I wasn't dressed at all and I, I totally wasn't thinking and it wasn't until I got to the office and saw everyone in business suits I was like wow I'm super super underdressed for this one so um <laughs> thankfully I walked in and he sort of looked me up and down and he was like oh wow you um you're definitely not trying to impress me. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I am. Um, but no, we had a great chat and thankfully he signed me and um, through that I ended up um, booking the librarians. So your advice to all aspiring actors is when they have a meeting, show up as comfortable <laughs> as possible. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe not, that was a fluke. <laughs> that was, uh, I got pretty lucky with that one, yeah. But um, yeah, he's, uh, he's an amazing man and um, I, um, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today. <laughs> 
Well, then let's talk about neighbors. Uh, sorry about librarians. I'm so excited. No, you're okay. Um, let's talk about librarians. When you went in for the audition, were you auditioning for the role of Ezekiel Jones? Yes, yes. I uh, actually never went in for oh. audition. Uh, yeah, the, the story goes, I flew back home uh, from L.A. after a few meetings, and I think um, I was pretty ready this year to go back to university for the year and then come back next year and give it a, give it a good go. But um, what ended up happening was uh, I think I was home for about five or six days and I got sent through uh, uh, an audition self-tape request. And I, um, I sort of read the brief and it said, Ezekiel Jones, uh, arrogant but still a little likeable. And I was like, that is nothing like me. But um, <laughs> as an actor, you jump at the chance to p portray, you know, something other than yourself, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much what all the fun's about. Um, so I sent the tape up and then, yeah, I, I got a call letting me know that I was flying to Portland and um, I, I didn't know what Portland really was at that stage. I was like, cool, um, let's go, it'll be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, we ended up going up and filming for four months. It was the, to date, the best experience of my life. Let's talk about some of your amazing co-stars. Yeah. Um, let's talk about working with Noah, first mm. of all. Noah Wiley. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Noah. <laughs> um, Noah Wiley is the best man I know by every measurement of the word. Um, I walked into set uh, and he walked over and I remember thinking, oh, it's, it's him, it's the librarian. Oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he came over and he shook my hand and he said, g'day. I'm, well, he didn't say g'day. He said, hey, <laughs> uh, I'm Noah Wiley. And, um, you know, um, uh, he gave me his number. And he said, we're going to have open lines of communication. Call me anytime you want advice on anything, wow. whether it's to do with life or being on set or offset or anything like that. And, and yeah, he just, he just really sort of took me under his wing a little, and um, as did the rest of the cast as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Noah, uh, it's, it's amazing to, to work with an actor of that caliber for my first sort of real big project. Uh, I couldn't have asked for anything more. He's, he's, he's the greatest. Well, you also were taken under the wing of what looks like from online, from social media, your new best friend, Christian Kane. Christian Kane. Um, Christian is a friend for life. Yeah, um, yeah he, he was very, um, he was very much my older brother on set. So he would um, always come to me and let me know um, if I was doing something right or if I could do anything better. Um, and I really needed that because I am in no position to turn down advice from all these established actors. Mm -hmm. They're, they've all done work and, and you know, um, I always said if I, if I could, you know, sort of draw inspiration from all of them and end up having, you know, a bit of Lindy, a bit of Rebecca, a, a bit of Larroquette, Wiley and Christian, I mean, I'm going to be a pretty good actor. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's a pretty good mix and um, yeah, I was super stoked to, be, to get to work with um, them and, and Noah as well. Yeah. And the show is so goofy sometimes. I know that it's, it, we as an audience are laughing with it all the time. Is there, has there been a chance or a time that you guys were trying to get through something but you had to stop because everyone was laughing? Um, yeah, pretty much every day. <laughs> um, there was a lot of laughs on set. Um, just with the sort of tone of the script, um, mm -hmm. the mood was always, you know, really great. Um, and pretty much, you know, working with Larry Kett was pretty much the hardest thing to ever do because you'd be trying to stay in character and not, you know, you, you, you tried not to break pretty much and, and he'd pretty much be like, you know, delivering his lines so funny, so perfectly and different every time and it was just like impossible just not to burst out laughing half the time. So um, that was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty much every day was just like going out and hanging out with your mates. It was incredible, yeah. That's, that sounds like the dream job. <laughs> Um, and I know that, uh, you know, you were saying that in Australia, your options are neighbors or, um, what was it now? Home and away. Home and away. Yeah. I want to say now and again, but <laughs> that's not it. It's a different show. <laughs> um, and what is the difference, if there is any, between the way, um, shows are made in Australia versus here? Um, that's a great question. Um, obviously production budgets, uh, on opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, neighbors was a soap opera family drama mm -hmm. and so it, uh, it didn't require a lot of money to make that kind of show whereas coming to the librarians they spent big and it was like you know everything to do with effects and everything mm -hmm. like that it was just like wow like we 
used a blue screen in a warehouse that literally took up like two entire walls. And I believe uh, Dean mentioned it was the biggest blue screen in the entire Northwest. So, um, you know, they, uh, they definitely spent a lot of money and, and you, it, was, it was sort of fun to be able to work with that kind of production value mm -hmm. um, because you weren't limited in what you could do. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like working with a blue screen with stuff that's not there? Um, that's kind of tough. I mean, like, at first I wasn't even sure where to be looking and I was just trying to make sure I was, you know, uh, cooperating with everyone else. But um, they ended up making it a lot easier. They would, you know, uh, attach maybe like a target on, on the end of a stick or mm -hmm. something like that. And, and uh, yeah, so by the end of it, I it was like rocking up to work and just knew how to do it immediately. But when I first started, it was definitely uh, definitely a bit of a trip. Um, Do you find yourself talking to tennis balls now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's what they would use yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much uh, Tom Hanks from Castaway. Yeah. I, I, every um, I'm friends with a lot of um, athletic balls. equipment. <laughs> you name them, of course. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Wilson yeah. for one. Yeah. Um, all right, I've got some fan questions mm -hmm. that I want to ask. Um, so from Michelle P. She wants to know what was uh, your favorite part about filming this show. Um, g'day, Michelle. Um, <laughs> favorite part? That's just so, like, it's a tough question because yeah. I just loved it all. I had literally what was a, a one-off experience. Um, but if I had to say anything, the best thing about working on this show was just forming the kind of relationships I did with the people I got to work with. Um, they all had interesting stories. Uh, there were people that I wouldn't wouldn't have you know met in my regular everyday life, and uh, yeah. So for me, you know, I can now consider a lot of these people close friends. So for me, the the best part was getting to work with some of them, some of the greatest people you'll ever meet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to know, uh, and as does Robert P. Mm -hmm. um, what about Ezekiel intrigued you aside from his character being so different from y who you are? Um. Ezekiel, he's an interesting character. He um, he does what he does, and he m may be the best at it, but he doesn't know why. And I always found that um, someone without a, a sense of purpose has to have a reason. And when I read the script, I remember thinking, I was reading through the pages, and I'm like, wow, wow, wow. Like, every page just was just ridiculously well written. And um, every time it got to Ezekiel, I was like, I feel like I could play that. I really feel like this whole idea of um, coming into a family, if you will, uh, is something I wasn't used to. Back home, it's just me and my mum. So I have a very small family, and to so sort of play a character who's now coming into a, a new, bigger family for me mm -hmm. was... It wasn't just a job. It, it really was an experience for me to kind of get to get to do that. So, yeah, I mean, um, I had a lot of fun playing him and, and um, you know, he, I mean, who wouldn't want to play Ezekiel? He's, uh, yeah. he's, uh, he's the cheeky bad boy. He's, um, he's pretty much Bart Simpson all grown up. And, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I pretty much, I read it and I remember thinking, this guy is going to be a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything that, you know, makes me miserable. Right. I, I like to be happy, so. Are we going to get more of Ezekiel's backstory this season? Are we going to find out how he started thieving? <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, pretty much, um, he has a very interesting backstory that John Rogers has only divulged with me. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much, uh, I can't. I obviously can't so tell you, you tell about, it. I can't. Tell all about it. So uh, this is what. No, uh, pretty much. Um, he uh, he's. You're gonna see sort of his sweet side come through, um, but for the most part, they don't really delve too much into it this season. Um, Jeffrey Thorne, one of the writers, would say to me, um, you know, if, if we keep going, um, you know, the shackles are coming off, we are breaking down every character. And, and um, I figured for now, uh, you know, they had half the time it normally takes to put a show together to get this one done. So um, their sort of uh, goal or intention was just to make the most fun possible show for the audience. And, um, you know, um, a lot of Ezekiel's backstory, unfortunately, is left out of this season. But... Um, if we continue, um, I'm going to tell you guys it's very interesting. Okay. And I was very, very surprised to hear it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Melanie N. Hmm? wants to know, speaking of the future, what uh, magical story would you want to tackle next season or the season wow. after? That's a great question. Um, Blackbeard's treasure. Oh. Yeah. 
I think that would be a lot of fun if we did like a pirate episode. Yeah. That'd be great. I'd wear an eye patch. <laughs> Are you a big pirate fan? I, I love pirate. I love sort of that whole, the whole history of rebellion. Mm. I, I'm not a very rebellious person, so I sort of vicariously live <laughs> through these people. Um, Blackbeard was an interesting case. Um, but no, definitely, I, fi I find that, um, you know, that sort of adventurous world very entertaining. Yeah. Um, which is what our show really is. It's, it's, it's fun TV. Um, every every week's going to be something completely different, um, and you know, I, I often get asked like, "What kind of genre is the show?" And I'm 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 sort of like, "It's kind of everything." Yeah. It's kind of like we got action, we got adventure, we got drama, we've got uh, comedy, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but yeah, I definitely um, I definitely would love to do a pirate episode. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see a pirate episode. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I imagine. Um, uh, Colonel Baird as like a wench on the pirate ship, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know uh, that's where Rebecca would, would love that. Yeah. She would love that actually. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, that'd be great, and uh, we'd, we'd get to film in water, and yeah. uh, that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so season two, we've said it here. It's gonna happen now. Mm. Blackbeard's treasure. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, okay. I have made this decision. Are you writing it? No. Oh, okay. I, I've made this decision. You wrote it. No, no, no. You should write it. I'd, I'd play it. If you, if you, <laughs> if, absolutely. We don't even need anyone else. We'll just we'll just film right. it together. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I have a camera on my iPhone so we can... Um, awesome. Yeah. This just went somewhere amazing <laughs> and I love it. Um, another, one more fan question. Um, at Kane's Wolf Spirit, I wonder who she's a fan of. Kania. Um, love the Kania. She wants to know about uh, stunts because Christian Kane does a lot of his own stunts. Absolutely. Did you get to do some stunts? I did. Uh, unfortunately, not of the Christian Kane variety. Right. Um, <laughs> I um, there was a lot of you know uh, learning how to land properly, jumping things like that. Um, but as far as uh, the physical stuff goes, I pretty much was able to do all of it up until the very last episode. If you guys hang around for that, um, oh, we you'll will. get to see. Yeah, we will. yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> very happy to have you. Um, so pretty much um, right at right at the very end something happens to Ezekiel where his body is sort of, I probably can't say actually, okay. but uh, no, uh, they, you ended did up, some of your own stunts. They, they ended up uh, needing some, some stunts guys and um, they brought in uh, my, uh, my now good friend Jake and um, he did an amazing job. Um, so yeah, um, did all of my own stunts up until this one point where I, I, I'll probably tell you now, if, I, if I'd done it, I would have been carted out and I'd probably be talking to you in some sort of neck brace today, yeah. <laughs> well, good thing you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Um, are you hoping to do even more stunts in the future? Are you going to get some training? For yeah, the yeah. I mean, I, I have I have a bit of a martial arts background, um, mm -hmm. so for me, um, I would love to get into some of that kind of stuff. Um, growing up, I always wanted to be a Power Ranger. Who so, didn't? Yeah, I mean, it was like the best job ever. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, it's just so much fun. It's not. I, I like to watch something, you know, as I would. I like to watch something with a bit of um, tempo. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really like to see sort of two talking heads constantly going at it. I would love to. I love action. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge, you know, uh, Bruce Willis fan. You know, um, so yeah, for me, um, all that stuff, you know, Jet Li, all that, that. That's just that's my world. Like that's that's yeah. yeah I love it. <laughs> so in addition to martial arts, do you have any other hidden skills? Music? Uh, music? No. <laughs> I uh, I did not get the music gene. My mother can sing very well. And um, I am yet to try in front of a crowd more than of more than three people. So I um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I might get some guitar lessons from Christian. There's only yeah. the three of us I, here. Yeah, you can no. Sing. Um, uh, well, uh, yeah, hey, <laughs> maybe maybe next time. All right, uh, next time. <laughs> um, I don't want you guys to hate me. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to know if you were a fan of um, the the other shows that Dean and, and John worked on, Leverage yeah. and. Yeah. Did you watch any of those shows? I um I'd seen the Sunday marathons every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, I to be honest, I'd only come into sort of knowledge of it um a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, the the show is unreal. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's amazing. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, which is the best thing about it because sometimes you know um you don't want to watch something and be bored. You want to be entertained and. Dean is in the business of entertaining people yeah. and he's very good at what he does and John Rogers uh, as well so for them uh, anytime I watched a leverage episode it was really funny because I would either like you know for me it was weird to see Christian with long hair right that was that was a trip apparently well, this is for me really weird to see him with short hair really yeah oh, okay well yeah for me I'm like wow you really had you know long locks um, yeah. <laughs> but um, leverage was a lot of fun they did an amazing job and, and I'm getting a lot of um, 
some lovely feedback about um, some car comparisons to Parker. To Parker? Yep. Not to Hardison? No, I, I, no, I'm actually getting a lot of Parker. Yeah, Parker the Thief. Interesting. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of um, uh, comparisons to her. Um, but, you know, for me, that's just... Um, that that's just inspiring, you know. Yeah. They did a great job. They went five years, and and uh, I think now there's calls for a, a leverage movie, which um, could be. Uh, Do you have news? Could about be very this? exciting. Uh, no, you I've absolutely no idea. I, you um, just got me so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've I've, se I've heard whispers, um, not from any particularly, you know credible sources but um, just the fan whispers. just pretty much just the fans yeah, yeah. um those yeah. are my whispers I've, yeah. been, I've been spreading those online yeah 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 pretty much um but yeah i um i think um i think dean's just you know leverage was great uh independence day was unreal mm -hmm. um so yeah they're they're great at what they do and it, it's an absolute honor to be working with them Great. Well, mm. thank you so much for coming no, in. No, you're right. I had a blast. Um, I'm sure the fans are all dying online <laughs> the way I am right now. Uh, yeah. um, why thank don't you. you tell them where they can find you on Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Yeah, um, so my Twitter is at G'day Junk Kim. Um, my Instagram is at Kids Sunday, uh, which was my nickname at work. Um, <laughs> and my Facebook is also G'day Junk Kim, so yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, they're pretty easy to remember, I think. Excellent. Yeah. And of course, if you want to follow me online, you can find me at yell.tv. That's Y-A-E-L.tv. Also, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff at Yell Teagle. That's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. -E and here for the Librarians After Show, you should, of course, tune in. Um, we film Tuesday nights. So we will see you uh, next time. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.